Hello everyone, it's Casey Vineyard here at Wonders of Wildlife National Museum and Aquarium. Thank you so much for joining us on our last week to talk about conservation presidents. We are so excited to have you here. In order for you to play this really fun mission, all you have to do is log on to www.wondersofwildlife.org forward slash mission dash conservation. That website will bring you to the mission conservation webpage. I'm gonna bring your attention down to get the app hit download, that's gonna take you to download the Agents of Discovery app in order for you to play Mission Conservation. Once you get the app and you're logged on, just hit the search bar and search for Conservation Presidents and that'll take you to download our mission. The next thing you're gonna to need to play this mission, if you scroll down on the website just a little bit further, it'll take you to print images. Hit download, you can either print those images off or you can play on your screen with your smart device. Scroll down just a little bit further. I'm going to take you to the last thing we're going to talk about on this web page. It's going to be schedule of missions and activities. Hit join Agent Bison. That there is going to show you our activity guide that we have made especially for you. So there's a craft, an in, or outdoor activity, and something you can do to get involved in conservation. The last thing I'm going to show you on this page is under that same thing, a mission of our schedule of missions and activities hit unlock mission reward. That's gonna take you to our Snapchat filter that you get once you've completed this mission. So I'm standing here in our under river experience here at Wonders of Wildlife. And this is a perfect intro to our partner that you may have seen before. He's an educator here at Wonders of Wildlife, Justin Kirkpatrick, how are you doing today? Hi there, Casey, I'm doing great. I uh, hope you're doing well out there as well. Uh, like she said, my name is Justin Kirkpatrick. I'm a historian and educator here at Wonders of Wildlife. And as you see, probably right behind me, I'm here at the Presidential Steel area in our aquarium. Uh, and I'm here to talk about presidents who like to fish and how their hobby really helped conservation efforts and the environment itself. So the first president I'm going to talk about is actually Barack Obama. Barack Obama was our 44th president from 2008 to 2016. Uh, in 2015, he took a really historic trip out to Alaska. He's actually the first president to visit since Alaska gained statehood in 1959. There he met the adventurous Bear, Bear Grylls, where he went fly fishing, and uh, accidentally a salmon spawned on the president. It was actually quite a funny moment. Uh, did you know that President Barack Obama actually help protect more land, water, and cultural sites than any other president. Uh, he did that by creating the Gold Butte and Bears Ears National Parks, which both combined are 1.5 million acres of protected land. He also expanded the California Coastal and Cascades Kiskiyou Monument, and he helped the diversification of our national monuments by celebrating diversity. So, uh, in 2016, he actually signed the Stonewall National Monument in New York into law and protected it as a symbol of the modern start of the LGBTQ plus rights movement. In 2017, in one of his last actions while in office, he created the Birmingham National Monument in Alabama. Uh, this national monument is several spots throughout the city and it celebrates the civil rights movement and hardships that that movement had to go through. The next president I wanna talk about is actually Jimmy Carter. So Jimmy Carter was our 39th president from 1977 to 1981. And President Carter loved fishing. Uh, while in office, he took over 50 fishing trips. Uh, he turned that into conservation efforts where he preserved 104 million acres of land in Alaska through executive action. Uh, his 11 national monuments remain the most substantial use of the Antiquities Act to expand the national park system in our history. Uh, the next president that I want to talk about is actually so famous for fishing that he was inducted into the International Game and Fish Hall of Fame. It's actually President George H.W. Bush, who was our 41st president from 1989 to 1993. President Bush was well known for fishing for striped bass at a summer retreat out in Maine, as well as several other game fish. 
uh, while in office, he protected 56 wildlife refuges, uh, helped draft conservation legislation, and made it his personal endeavor to protect the ozone layer. Uh, in 1970, scientists found that chlorofluorocarbons depleted the ozone layer, which is a thin layer in our atmosphere of O3 molecules, which protects us from the sun's harmful rays. Without that ozone layer, a lot of things would burn up and it would not be a lot of fun. But President Bush, with the Clean, Act Air, Clean Air Act of 1990, helped reduce acid rain, toxic emissions, and protected that ozone. Scientists estimate that the ozone layer could completely recover by, 20, by the 2060s. Uh, one quote of President Bush's that I really love a lot is that people who think we are powerless against the greenhouse effect forget about the White House effect. And he's absolutely true. Uh, the White House effect is in, is in full effect when we talk about conservation and the help that our presidents can get for the environment. The last president I wanna talk about is actually John F. Kennedy. So John F. Kennedy was our 35th president from 1961 to 1963. And although he wasn't an avid fisherman like Carter or H.W. Bush, uh, he, this is a picture of him catching a sailfish while on his honeymoon. Uh, and he did, he was only in office for about a thousand days, unfortunately. And in 19, or, but he did a lot to help our conservation efforts. So in 1956, before he was president, the National Park Service issued a report on declining shorelines due to commercial and private development. They worried that our shorelines were going to eventually disappear and not everyone would have access to them. Uh, so when he became president, John F. Kennedy acquired the Cape Cod National Shoreline, Padre Island National Shoreline, and the Point Reyes National Shoreline. And I know personally, I'm very thankful for the Padre Island National Shoreline. Um, in, nine, in September of 1963, John F. Kennedy toured 11 states on a conservation awareness tour, talking about the different uh, obstacles that we would come across due to climate change and how we could better, how we could tackle those issues. So now that we've highlighted some of our conservation champions, let's talk about some of the land that they protected. So Chugach National Forest, was created in 1907 by Theodore Roosevelt. It's located on, in South Alaska on the Prince William Sound and spans 5.4 million acres of forest land, uh, which is quite a lot of land. Um, with a forest that big, you're gonna have a lot of animals which call it home. It's home to 20 million birds yearly. And it's the only national forest which supports doll sheep. It's also home to several groups of Athabascan Native Americans who continue traditions that are thousands and thousands of years old in the forest, uh, which is a lot of fun. So now that we've talked about that, we've talked a lot about conservation at the top and something that our presidents can do to help. But as we all know, conservation starts at the bottom. And there are several ways in which you can participate in conservation to help protect our environment by going to a national park or enjoying some of the land and water that we have. I remember that we simply borrow the land from future generations and that we should always, always make sure that the earth is in better condition than when we found it. Uh, we could also determine with our vote that conservation is at the forefront of every presidential administration, because as we see, presidents can get a lot done in the name of conservation. So, now that we've talked about that, I kind of want to show you this really cool thing I got right here. It's actually a alligator gar skull. So alligator gar are the largest species of gar, which are freshwater fish, right? And they can grow up to 10 feet long and 100 pounds, uh, which is pretty big for, an, for a fish, right? They're really cool. They are ambush predators, meaning they appear really sluggish in the water. Uh, until the prey comes nearby and then they'll snap to the side really fast to grab them in their powerful jaws here. And then they'll gobble them on up. Uh, to help them gobble up those prey, they actually have two rows of teeth inside of their mouth, uh, which helps them better grip that prey. 
Alligator gar are a very old animal, according to fossil records. They are living fossils that date back 100 million years, uh, which is the same time as the Cretaceous era. So if you think about it, at the same time Tyrannosaurus rex is stomping around our Western US, these guys are swimming in the water. And we still have them here today, and you could definitely go fish for them right now. All right, now that I've, now that I've talked for a little bit, I'm going to kick it back over to Casey, and she's going to talk a little bit more about some of our freshwater fish. Justin, thank you so much for spreading your knowledge with us, um, not only about presidents and conservation and all that they do, um, the land, the water, everything that they protect is for you, for public use. So thank you so much for touching on that. Um, so we actually have a special surprise for you. You guys are getting to see some unseen, never seen before footage over our virtual chat. Uh, we have our community pond dive show that we are going to show for you guys today, okay? So this is our community pond exhibit here at Wonders of Wildlife. It is a freshwater game species exhibit. And as you can see, we have two scuba divers in the water. Some of you at home may ask, what is scuba? If you guys know what scuba stands for, I want you to write it down in the chat right now. I'll give you one second so you can write that in the comments and then I'll tell you what it stands for. So scuba stands for self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. So as you can see, we do have two divers here in the water. So this is a fresh water exhibit. It is 23 feet deep. It ranges from about 65 to 67 degrees, and it has 130,000 gallons of water. That is a lot of water, especially fresh water. So as Justin was talking about, um, a game species is a species that you guys are able to hunt and fit, or you guys are able to bow hunt, and you guys are able to fish. So. This exhibit here is all of the fish that you guys are able to do that within season. So we have everything from bass to catfish, and then there's three different species of fish that I'm gonna talk specifically about. But before we get started on that, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what the divers are doing in the water. So as I said before, we are feeding. Here at Wonders of Wildlife, we have do, or two different feeding methods um, that we use to feed our animals. So we have one, target feeding, and two, broadcast feeding. So broadcast feeding can look a little bit different. Sometimes it's throwing fish and distributing it throughout the top of the exhibit, or as you can see near our spoonbill fish, which is going to be the fish at the center near the diver with the really, really long nose. Um, they are using a gel and fry mixture with a squirt bottle to feed that fish. So let's talk a little bit about that spoonbill fish. So some call it a spoonbill, some call it a paddlefish. Both are correct. So that species of fish is called a spoonbill fish because of its really long nose or its rostrum. So something that's cool about that fish is that its rostrum is very similar to how we have taste buds. So it will use its rostrum to taste for microorganisms throughout the water. If you look very closely, you can see that it has its mouth very, very wide open. And that's because it's called a filter feeder. So since we are using that gel and fry mixture, it simulates those microorganisms um, like algae in the water. So what that spoonbill is doing is with its rostrum, it's sensing the microorganisms in the water and it's opening its mouth really wide because it's going to filter out the water and find its food. So they have these cool things called gill rakers. Um, so when they are sucking in the water, those gill rakers will actually catch on to the food and expel water out the side. Isn't that pretty neat? Um, that's something that's really unique about um, those fish right there. So the next we are gonna talk about are sturgeons. So we have three different species of sturgeons here in the water. We have our white sturgeon, which is the largest, we have our Atlantic sturgeon, which is the medium sized, and then we're gonna have our lake sturgeon, which is the smallest species. So you can see the diver down at the bottom and there's gonna be a yellow circle down at the bottom there. So that there is their target. 
So they will use that target in order to feed their fish. So we actually feed them here um, herring and mackerel and other small species of fish. You can see that they are down towards the bottom. So very similar to catfish, sturgeons are what's known as bottom feeders. If you look very closely to those fish, you can see that they have similar whiskers, as you will, um, similar to those catfish. Those are called barbels. And what they do is they'll swim at the very bottom of the water. They'll use those barbels to send electro signals to their brain to tell them where their food is. Here at Wonders of Wildlife, we have actually trained the sturgeon to go up to the target as a form of enrichment to feed those fish. It's very unique and it's very cool. So as Justin was talking about, um, with the gar being very, very old species of fish, the sturgeon are actually 200 million years old. So 200 million years old, they are very old fish, very similar to dinosaurs. So like I said, the white sturgeon is the largest sturgeon reaching up to 12 feet and 1,500 pounds. 1,500 pounds. They are actually the largest freshwater species of fish in all of North America. And then we have the smallest beach species, which is going to be that lake sturgeon. And that's going to get about half of the size and a fraction of the weight at six feet and 200 pounds. So they do create what's called a suction vortex with their mouth. You can see their mouth is underneath them. They use those barbells to help them find the food at the bottom, the barbels, I'm sorry, um, to find their food at the bottom. And they'll actually use their mouth at the bottom to suction up the food, which is very unique to watch. The next thing I'm going to talk about are our species of gar. So while the sturgeons are bottom feeders and they like to eat at the very, very bottom of this exhibit, our gar are actually gonna be located towards the top. So we have three different species of gar here in the water. We're gonna have our short nose gar, we're gonna have our long nose gar, and we're gonna have our alligator gar, which Justin touched on just a little bit earlier. So we're gonna start with the largest species of gar. So as Justin said, they get up to 10 feet and they have hit records of 300 feet, oh, I'm sorry, uh, 300 pounds um, in the wild. So they have this really cool adaptation, um, which is similar to back in the day when knights wore those suits of armor. They have the suit of armor to protect them all throughout their body. So they have a very tough shell exterior. So like I said, or like Justin said earlier, they are ambush predators. So as you can see, we have our diver swimming over to the gar here. They do have those two rows of teeth and they are very sharp. So what we use to protect our divers, we'll use three foot long tongs to help us feed our fish here at Wonders of Wildlife. So that is all that I have for you today. I just wanted to say thank you so, so much for joining us. I'm going to leave you with a quote from Theodore Roosevelt. Life is a great adventure, accept it in such a spirit. This is our last week for the month of February. So join us next week and next month uh, as we talk about our newest live, as we talk about our newest mission, which is going to be freshwater ecosystems. Thank you so much and we'll see you on Tuesday. Thank you.